The only thing as satisfying as eating bread is making it yourself with just a few simple ingredients. Flour, water, a little salt, some yeast, and you can create something that's fun to make, tastes great, and is healthy for you too. This is my favorite part of making bread, kneading the dough. You push it, punch it, poke it, you mush it, mash it, maul it, you really work the dough with your hands. Now the baker's hands aren't the only hands that go into making a loaf of bread. Many other people lend a hand too. This book celebrates the whole community that works so hard to make bread. It's called Bread is for Eating. Bread is for Eating by David and Phyllis Gershader. Illustrated by Emma Shaw Smith. Read by Cecilia Arana. And Michael Uribe. Bread is for eating, Mamita says when I leave bread on my plate. Bread is for eating. And she sings this song to me. El pan es para comer. El pan es para la vida. No tires el pan. Ay, ay, vida mía. Think of the seed asleep in the ground. Think of the earth, a dark, cozy bed. Think of the sun shining down on the earth. Think of the rain waking the seed from its slumber. I'm thinking, Mamita. I'm thinking about the little sprouts coming up from the ground. And Mamita says, This song is for the sprouting seed. El pan es para comer, el pan es para la vida, no tires el pan, ay, ay, vida mía. Think of the farmer who tills the soil, hoping the rains will come on time. Think of the harvester who cuts the wheat and catches the grain. Is it time for a song? A song for the grains of wheat? Si! Sí. El pan es para comer El pan es para la vida No tires el pan Ay, ay, vida mía Think of the worker who loads the grain and takes it to town. Think of the miller who grinds grain into flour so soft and fine. Think of the storekeeper who sells us the flour. Yes, I'm thinking, Mamita. I'm thinking about the money we need to buy flour. And Mamita says, this song is also for the families working all day to put bread on the table. El pan es para comer. El pan es para la vida. No tires el pan. Ay, ay, vida mía. Think of the cook kneading flour with water and yeast. Think of the baker baking bread before dawn. Think of the people around the world dreaming of bread. I'm hungry for bread, Mamita. 
Then toast it and butter it or spread it with jam. Eat it cold, eat it hot, eat a little, eat a lot. Bread is good. El pan es bueno. We thank the seed, earth, sun, and rain for the grain, the beautiful grain, and sing for the bread that gives us life again and again and again. Will you sing the song with me? Yes, mamita. El pan es para comer. El pan es para la vida. No tires el pan. Ay, ay, vida mía. Bread is so good to eat. Bread is the staff of life. Don't throw the bread. Don't throw the bread away. I, I love of my life. You know, bread really is the staff of life. It's the most basic food we eat. Every culture in every corner of the world has its own particular kind of bread and a special tradition of how to make it. My name is Debbie Sikyankuku. I am Hopi tribe from northern part of Arizona, about 80 miles east of the Grand Canyon. We have a very special and unique kind of bread that we make. It's called biki. This bread is made from blue cornmeal, and the Hopi people are the only people to make biki bread. You have your cornmeal in the bowl. Take the boiling water into the cornmeal and begin mixing with the stick, uh, gradually bringing more cornmeal into the mix until you can form a ball. Uh, once it reaches that texture, then you can pour warm water into the ash mix and then strain it by using the strainer, which we call wusi. The whole process of making biki is um, a very special time. It's a time when you can sit and meditate and think. You're continuously kneading the dough adding water to it every time until it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it reaches about the consistency of pancake batter. You can start feel it sliding through your fingers. When you do this, the dough will come out on this side. And when it gets really thin, when you lift it up, the dough will come streaming out. Biki is a very important part of Hopi life. It's used in all different kinds of ceremonies, such as celebration of a child being born or the celebration of a marriage. During the time that the mixture is being made, the fire will have been started underneath the stone. The Piki stone is a very special stone that is set on top of a little wall that's built with an opening on the side so the fire can go underneath and heat the stone. We use oils to put on the stone to moisturize it so that the Piki won't stick. 
The stones are usually passed down from generation to generation, and this particular stone that I'm using belongs to my mother. Making piki is uh, a very good time for people to gather together, and we normally have people like our sisters, our mothers, our grandmothers, who are there with us, helping us in the process. Today I have my sister, Susan, who is going to be helping me. In making the piki, we put a layer of the dough on the stone and let that cook. The stone is very hot, so you're smoothing the dough on, and when you put your hand back in the bowl, you're scooping up cool batter, which helps in keeping your hand cool. And over time, your hand will be trained, so it won't be burnt. When it starts to curl up at the top, that's usually when we can tell it's cooked and it's ready to be peeled off the stone. This very first sheet that we take off will be given to the fire. In Hopi culture, we are taught that everything is connected. Everything has a purpose and everything has a meaning. So in feeding the fire with the first sheet of piki that you make, shows your gratitude to the different elements that help sustain life. The very first time I sat behind a biki stone was probably when I was five years old. Uh, I used to watch my grandmother make biki. The steam that rises from the sheet that is cooking will help make it flexible once again. And then you fold the whole sheet from the left and then from the right. And then we'll roll it upwards until it makes a roll. <laughs> 